Yes, I would agree with him that uh, learning, leadership and learning go together. Uh, I point, pointed out just now how important it is to have knowledge, learning. You can become a, a politician without any learning because, you know, some politician... Popular, I would like to explain here a little bit, uh, if you don't mind. You know, uh, our society is uh, not very sophisticated, especially in the rural areas. There have been Wakil Rakyat who spends his time visiting the sick, bathing the dead, going for kunduri, washing the plates, all this is very popular. Every election he will win. But do you want a, a member of parliament who can wash dishes? If you want, then that's what you get. You see, people think that, well, this is a great man. You want him to baca doa? He can. You want him to bathe uh, the, uh, the dead body? Yes, he can. You want him to come for your wedding? Oh, he'll come. Give you a little gift also. And all this kind of thing. But that is not the job of a Waki Rakyat. So if you want to be a Waki Rakyat, you must have some other knowledge which goes along with being a leader. A Waki Rakyat, a member of parliament, is in a way a leader of, of, of sorts. Otherwise, uh, somebody else would have uh, been elected. But as a leader, he must have knowledge and only with this knowledge can he perform his work well. Now, what about students? Students must be knowledgeable about politics, about what is happening in their country. We cannot have an ignorant student who knows only his uh, subject, but does not know the politics of his country, does not know his role in the, in the society. But students have to remember that you are primarily here to study. Your job is to study. You cannot sacrifice study because you are interested in politics. Because for you to study here, even if you pay the fees, is not enough. Your fee will not cover the cost of your study. The government using public money pays for your education. A person who has a sense of responsibility will not want to abuse the money spent on him in doing something else. After he has graduated, then, of course, he can be very active because then he's using his own money. But while you are a student, you should be knowledgeable about politics, but you should concentrate on getting through your exams and becoming qualified and working after that, and then you can be fully involved in politics. But uh, I would like to say that if we have a lot of students who are very ignorant about the politics of the country, he wouldn't even have the motivation to study hard. If you know that your knowledge is important for your nation, your country, your people, then you will work hard to acquire that knowledge so that we become a society that is knowledgeable. And we need a society that is knowledgeable today. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Where? <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Uh, my name is Parvez Ahmad, and I'm a UDP uh, first grade student. Uh, along with that, I also been remain a, a comparative religion student and comparative culture student. Sir, uh, based on your topic, as uh, you discussed the role of graduate at 21st century. So, sir, my question is the uh, the world is divided into two fold. One is called the East, and the other is called the West. So when a student at the West, he do something well for his community or for his religions or for his country. So he's awarded with a prize, it's called Nobel Prize. And he's been named as Nobel Laureate. But if at the same time, a graduate from Eastern country do something good for, his, uh, for the protection of his nature or for his people or his religion, 
so he's blamed and he's been called as a terrorist or extremist. So what do you think? Is it a justice? Because we never called them the same 1400 years ago when we have the power, when we were scientifically, I mean, uh, when we are much developed as compared to them. So as an international uh, uh, leader, I believe that you are one of the international leaders, the people mostly in Pakistan believe Mahathi is not only a leader related with the Malaysia. So that's why I'm asking you this question. Thank you, sir. Well, I wouldn't say that the world uh, labels all the students in the East as terrorists. They don't label everyone. They label some of us. They label some of us because we do acts which are not, uh, not really good for the community. Uh, you know, sometimes you tie a bomb to yourself and blow yourself up in a mosque when people are praying. What do you call that person? He's a good Pakistani? I don't think he's a good Pakistani. He may be, uh, if you are a Sunni, he may be a Sunni, but he's not a good Pakistani. But if he studies and learns and creates something that is valuable to his community, nobody is going to call him a terrorist. You see, we become terrorists by choice because we are weak, because we don't know how to, uh, how to fight back. We don't have the means to fight back. And we do things which make, us, make people label us as terrorists. For me, the interpretation of terrorists is very simple. Anybody who causes terror is a terrorist. You agree with me? Anybody who causes terror is a terrorist. When you are there in your house and you hear a plane flying above and you know he's about to drop a bomb on your house, what do you call that person? Because you are terrified. Aren't you terrified when you are waiting for the bomb to call, fall on your head? Sure, you must be terrified. So that man is a terrorist, even though he is sent by another country. To me, there are terrorist states as well as terrorist individuals. If you terrify people, then you are a terrorist. But if you are a nice pe person who helps people, give arms and all that, you are not a terrorist. So it is not East and West at all. It is the way we behave. The, the West is as much uh, uh, involved in terror attacks than the East. In fact, they are worse. They use their planes, their bombs, and their rockets, and their uh, atom bombs, and their all kinds of uh, murder weapons against people who are very weak, innocent. So those people are terrorists. But when you reply in kind, you also become a terrorist. It's not because of it's East and West. And Pakistan, you have a problem because of the division between the people who are Sunni and Shia. And recently, you know, the Sunnis attacked the Shia. What will happen later is that the Shia will attack the Sunni. And then the Sunni will attack the Shia. And then the Shia will attack the Sunni. Where do we get from there? Nothing. You see, in this country, we should really be fighting each other. We are not only divided uh, by race, we are divided by religion, by culture, by language. But I think if the Malays and the Chinese and the Indians decide to fight each other, we are going, all of us are going to suffer. Let's not uh, bother about what he believes in, his interpretation of Islam and your interpretation of Islam. Think of yourself as Pakistanis and you want to build your country you will not be a terrorist. Our apologies, Tone, but uh, due to time constraint, we can only allow for one last question. Yes, one last question. Thank you. Thank you.